Hello, 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 my friends, and welcome to Studio Day Heffery. I am Jeff Cavanaugh. Hi. It is nice to have you here. We have a three pack of things today. Three pack. Pack number one CD Lamb, no show at Cowboys offseason activities that started this morning. Number two, the three most likely names to be called at number 24 overall. And number three today uh, will be the names that, if available, I hope we'll convince them to pivot and not feel like they have to take offensive lines. We'll have those three things for you today, live from Studio Day, Heffrey. And this, of course, is brought to you by my friends at Bet Online, where if you use the promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, when you sign up, you will get a 50% sign up bonus on that first deposit. It's Bet Online, it's where the game starts, and it's what you need to be locked and loaded with, especially with the NBA playoffs upon us. NHL playoffs, all the fun is there to be had for you at Bet Online. All right, number one. CeeDee Lamb is not at, I believe Michael Gelkin said the first thing the Cowboys had was an 8 a.m. team meeting. CeeDee Lamb not there. Shocking. A guy going into the fifth year of his rookie contract. The final year of his rookie contract is a no-show for OTAs uh, because that's what you do. Standard operating procedure. What do voluntary mean? It's voluntary. This is when you make your little statement without really disrupting anything. You just don't show up and you say, hey, come on, let's have some, let's have some chats. Let me get my monies. Which apparently is not very far along with C.D. Lamb and is apparently not a very pressing issue with Dak Prescott either and basically have heard nothing about a potential Micah Parsons contract either which is only minorly annoying, but it is annoying because this is a Cowboys specialty. Cowboys specialty is they have trouble getting contracts done with the really, really, really good players until they are absolutely up against it. And when they're absolutely up against it, they lose the negotiation and they give whatever the player wants. That is what happens to the Dallas Cowboys when it comes to negotiating. You know who can get a deal done early? Uh... CD, not, I'm not, I'm sorry, not CD Lamb. Uh, Terrence Steele got a deal done early. Jalen Smith got a deal done early. Zeke Elliott got a deal done early because he held out. So that was like, Zeke is a running back. Jalen is a guy who had one leg. And Terrence Steele's a guy who had one leg at the time. The Cowboys don't have a problem getting it done with some guys. If you call them up and you're like, hey, I was thinking about getting a deal done, they're like, we'll take whatever you'll give us. And they're like, okay, cool. Here's your contract. Have a great day. But if they're really, really good players, then the Cowboys have trouble with that, and they end up going all the way through it, and then they have to dance with franchise tags, and then they run out of time, and they have to give them all the monies in the world. So it would be better if the Cowboys were able to handle this like, say, the Eagles just did with Devontae Smith, it's a little bit different because he's not setting the market. But if you'll remember, Devontae Smith for the Eagles was in the same draft class as Micah Parsons, who we basically don't hear anything about a negotiation because it's going to be top of the market. And that's scary to the Cowboys. But Devontae Smith, after three years, they're like, oh, yeah, good player. You got two years left on your deal. You know that we could tag you after that that's when you should be negotiating a contract with the guys that you really, really like is after their third year when you're first allowed to because they might be tempted to take a good deal instead of all the monies because they get money now and they would like money now as opposed to waiting two or three years. But once you get closer and closer to the end of a contract, they go, eh, leverage has shifted, my friend. So CD's not there And he'll show up when it's time to show up when it's no longer voluntary in June, I would imagine. And then they'll go play football. So is it a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. It's just annoying that that is the... That that news comes out on the same day that Devontae Smith getting a new contract news comes out. And so it's just annoying. The Eagles are better at the way that they play with the cap, anticipate and manipulate the cap. They're better at it than the Cowboys are because they have better people in those jobs. Anyway... We move on because it's draft season. I'm going to give you, according to Jeff, the three most popular names, the three most likely names that you could hear for the Cowboys drafting at number 24 overall. And how are we going to get to these names? Well, we're just going to use context clues. We're going to look at how all these players are ranked. We're going to watch these players on tape. We're going to think about what the Cowboys need. And then we're going to go, oh, 
I feel like this lines up pretty good. The three most likely names to hear for the Dallas Cowboys select at number 24 overall. Number one, Jackson Powers Johnson, center, Oregon. He's the best center that played center. Why am I saying it's center? He's the best center that played center in college on film in the 2024 draft class. I saw my buddy Skywalker Steele send out a tweet like that, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's an interesting caveat, but yes, I agree. He has the best center film in this draft class. Uh, so if you're looking at center one, for me, he's center two, but the other one doesn't didn't play center for college last year. He played tackle. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, big position of need for the Cowboys. I do think that is the position on the offensive line, that if things don't fall their way, they might be willing to just give it a rip with Brock Hoffman or TJ Bass because the Cowboys aren't taking things seriously this offseason. Uh, I do think that's the most likely spot of the two on offensive line that could be manned by somebody that's already on the roster is center if it doesn't fall their way. Because I don't... Mm, that is interesting, though. It won't be left tackle. Left tackle won't be manned by someone on the roster unless it's somebody that's moving in Tyler Smith. And then maybe you're talking about TJ Bass at left guard. I don't know. It just depends how unserious they want to be and just pretend that people in-house can do everything as opposed to bringing in anyone to help. So Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon. Number two, Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. You should know him by now because he is uh, all over the place on pretty much every mock draft I've seen this entire year. He's the guy that they have the Cowboys picking because it lines up with how many offensive tackles will likely be gone and what people think of this tackle class. He kind of becomes the next man up when the Cowboys are on the clock, most likely. I hope he's not the pick. Let's just get that out of the way. I hope Tyler Guyton is not the pick. It's a guy that when he went to college, went as an athlete, eventually was an H-back slash tight end, and then became an offensive tackle. And that is all over his tape, that he's kind of new at this. Um, I also didn't like the Tyler Smith pick. I'd be happy to be wrong again. I love being wrong, especially if it means that the player's good. Tyler Guyton scares me. But... I do think that there's a pretty good likelihood that he's the pick because I think that they might force an offensive tackle pick and he might be the top one available. What you hope is that somebody like Fuaga from Oregon State or Amarius Mims from Georgia, I hope one of them is available instead. But if they're not, and he is everybody's top offensive tackle prospect left, boy, I could totally see him being the pick. Third, of my most likely to be picked candidates, Graham Barton out of Duke. He was an offensive tackle, really nice player, and he's my top center prospect in this draft. So two center guys and a tackle guy. And Barton could probably play multiple positions. And boy, they love the words position flex. I hate them, but they love them. Those are my three most likely guys. Jackson Powers Johnson and Graham Barton centers. And Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle. And I will reiterate I think this is a great year to trade down if you find the opportunity because some of those names would still be in play. You could add the name Zach Frazier, the West Virginia center, who I think is a nice prospect. Uh, you could start throwing in some other offensive line names, maybe Cooper Beebe, Kansas State guard. You could throw in other names, and you could add draft capital. That's my dream. And then I also wanted to mention in this video, one other, there's just one more thing. I was just thinking about, okay, what if we pivoted away from offensive line for a second? Like, what is ways that the draft could fall where you would pick a non-offensive line position in the first round? And I think it's unlikely that any of these guys are available, but I do think it's worth mentioning. The pass rush group in this draft is okay. There is not, for me, a guy that is a... Miles Garrett prospect or insert awesome, a Bosa insert awesome pass rush prospect here. I don't see one in this draft class. The top guys, Dallas Turner at Alabama, Jared Verse at Florida State, and Leatu, 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 Latu. I'm going to get the draft class pronunciations one day. Uh, at UCLA. Those are probably the three top pass rushers. Dallas Turner and Jared Verse, definitely. 
if one of those two were available. But again, you are talking about the best pass rushers in the draft class. And even if it's not a great at the top group, it's a premium position. So I couldn't imagine that one of those two guys makes it. But if they do, I would hope the Cowboys would pivot and make that pick. Terion Arnold and Quinion Mitchell, the top two cornerback prospects in this draft class. Again, I don't think there is a top, top, top uh, Patrick Sertan, J.C. Horn. I think these guys are eh, a little bit below that for me as a prospect, so maybe they don't go super duper high. If one of those guys hung around all the way to 24, take them. Pivot away from offensive line and take them. And then Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. If he gets there, take him. The top three wide receivers, I think, is pretty well established. They're going to go pretty darn quick. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to go pretty darn quick. Top three, top four. Top five, if it gets wild and quarterbacks go in the top four. And Malik Neighbors from LSU and Rome Odunze from Washington are going to follow him off the board pretty quick. But Brian Thomas Jr., if he makes it to 24, forget the offensive line, figure it out later. The problem is the Cowboys are one of the only teams in football that aren't setting themselves up to be able to do that. But you have to set yourself up to do that. If a gift falls in your lap, you take it. And we'll figure the rest out later. That's why football God inv- invented free agency. That's why football God invented trading so that you can then use the draft, a.k.a. the most value-intensive way of adding players. I get to add whoever I want to pick. It is very cost-controlled. And if I can get guys at premium positions on a cost-controlled deal, that is awesome. So if that falls in your lap with a corner, with a receiver, with a pass rusher, you snap that up so fast and you figure out the offensive line later. So those are my three things today. No CD, no big deal. Just annoying watching how other teams play with the cap versus how the Cowboys end up dealing with it. But no big deal. They'll be here when it matters. Most likely Cowboys selections in the first round, Jackson Powers Johnson, Tyler Guyton, Graham Barton, and guys that I hope make them pivot if they're available. Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Terrion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr. That's Cowboys stuff for the day. Uh, It would be very helpful for me if you'd hit the little thumbs up and leave in the comments. What's today's comment? What's your favorite cheese to put on a grilled cheese? Leave that in the comments. These are algorithm things. I want thumbs up and I want comments flying all over the place. Who do you want to pick at 24? Throw all the things in there. Remember, you have no idea what anyone's going through, so be cool to everyone. I love you. Be easy.